Yes, please don't lick my knitting. Thank you. to episode 8 of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name is Leslie and this is a podcast about knitting, crochet and general yarn craft from the south coast of England. Uh, if you want to get hold of me on Ravelry, my name is Lala, which is spelt L-A-H-L-A-H. -H. My piece of paper, which is telling me all the things I should say at the beginning, has just fallen on the floor. One moment, caller. <sighs> oh. And as you'll see, this is a really kind of smooth, professional, slick podcast. What else could we want? I'm knitting during the intro, rather unusually. Actually, I'm picking up a stitch during the intro. Uh, because someone commented on YouTube that they would like to see me knitting, as it's a knitting podcast. So this is it. This is how I knit. Um, I don't have the smoothest of techniques. I was taught by... A left-handed mother and a right-handed grandmother so it's all a bit weird and wooly really but it works and there are no knitting police as I believe Stephanie Pearl McPhee said and if she did she's absolutely right so yes this is me knitting and what was I saying oh yes if you want to get hold of me on Ravelry my name is Lala which is spelt L-A-H L-A-H I'm also on Instagram and on Twitter as knitting or death but I'm probably most active on Ravelry. You're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a returning viewer or a new one, thank you very much. It is much appreciated. This is just me blathering on really about knitting and crochet and other crafty bits that I love. I record this throughout the month in sections. That makes it sound more organized than it is. When I have something to say, I'll record a bit about it and I put those together and then upload them on the last weekend of the month. So that's kind of how we work. This month, August, I have a giveaway. Um, came as a lovely surprise. Someone contacted me and offered me a prize to give away. So, of course, I said yes. So you'll hear more about that later. And otherwise, we have a finished object. We have a couple of new things started. Uh, the rest of it is just my normal nonsense. So I hope you enjoy the podcast. Now before August even begins, because I'm recording this little section the day that July's podcast goes onto YouTube, I'd like to nominate myself for Idiot of the Month. Oh, I can't believe I've done this. The panel jacket, the Carol Lapin pattern, that's the inspiration for this. I don't want to blame her for all of my mistakes. I mentioned in the last podcast that I keep the pieces blocking so that I can keep a, a note of where the pins are um, so that when I block the next piece, they'll come to the same shape. After recording that last month, this month, last month, I finished the piece I'd been doing. I think I had about 60 rows still to do or 40 rows still to do, something like that. Took it to the blocking pieces, took the, the blocking squares, took the previous piece off, put the new piece on and I thought, that's a bit big. And I had made the 200 row section the wrong size. Now it's not many stitches, it's a narrow section, but even so that was frustrating. I um, I can't believe I did that. The, the garment has a central piece at the back and then panels going either side. And I was doing one of the side panels. There are two either side of the central bank and, and matching down the front. I had made the, the piece I was working on the size of the central back panel rather than one of the side ones. So it's about sort of 10 stitches too big. So that was silly. So I had to unpick it all and start again. I mean, at least it was only a panel. It wasn't the whole back of the sweater or something, but even so, tad frustrated with myself. So today, um, 
instead of starting a new panel I was reworking a previous one but it, I did it in the best of environments I uh, went to a concert that a, a friend and neighbour of mine was in she plays the recorder and when I've told most people that they kind of groan and say oh no not that squeaky thing that little children play well yes that squeaky thing that little children play but bigger ones of them bigger versions of them and played by adults so not so squeaky and uh, she was in she belongs to a local group of recorder players and they had a lunchtime concert in a church in Old Town Hastings today and for those of you who are interested in art history or particularly the pre-Raphaelites it's quite a significant church because it's the church in which Gabrielle Dante Rossetti married Lizzie Siddle so it's a lovely church and the concert was great fun really enjoyed it and they cover a range of things from ancient music kind of 15th century stuff may not be ancient ancient music but it's pretty old to me right up to 20th century uh, pieces they even did a version of the entertainer so really enjoyed the concert it was only on for an hour lovely break in the middle of the day so i caught the bus into town because it's saturday and parking on a saturday is is crazy and sorry if you can hear seagulls we live by the sea, what can I tell you? Oh, and the dog shaking, oh, it's all the noises today. Um, yeah, so I caught the bus in, so I did a bit of knitting, did from about there to there on the bus, and then we had an hour of the concert, so I did another bit, and I've done some more. So I'm almost back to where I was when I recorded before. I've got uh, 56 rows of this panel to do before I block it, but as it has fewer stitches than the last one I was doing, it probably works out about the same. So yes, that's silly, but we all make mistakes and, um, oh, you know, it's not worth crying over, but it is just a bit frustrating. At least I hadn't blocked it because then this would be very crinkly yarn rather than just pulled out yarn. Oh, onwards and upwards. A couple of people commented on the last podcast and thank you everyone for your comments. Um, they noticed that there was no dog content during July. So here is a bit of footage putting that right. Well, I was working on my cotton hoodie. I'm doing strange things with my hair. But this time of night, and it's uh, just coming up to 10 o'clock, somebody... decides that she needs a cuddle so no more knitting for me at the moment my knitting is actually under the dog because she needs a fuss poor little dog that nobody loves we have to make a fuss of her poor thing so if you ever wonder why I don't seem to get much knitting done hey? Right, lovely people, I have had someone get in contact with me and offer me another giveaway prize. So that is fab. Had a message from Janet, that's Janet Segley. I think I've got that right, forgive me Janet. Sigley, I do apologise Janet. Um, yeah, she got in touch on Ravelry and offered a giveaway prize. And never one to give away give up an opportunity to give something away to you I still yes please thank you very much and what she has very kindly sent through are two books and we have here the knitters companion and her newly launched the crocheters companion now Janet very kindly wrote a letter as well she said she's a, a retired psychiatric nurse so good on you girl um, and it was while she was adapting a pattern that she realised she needed something to help her keep a note of her modifications and all the things that she was doing. So she came up with The Knitter's Companion and it has a little space to hold your pattern here. I hope you can see that. This different camera is great but I have to have it further away otherwise it feels like you're kind of this close and no one wants to see me that close up. 
So Janet has also put into here a list of um, details, and this is all for you to fill in. So this one has a list of favourite podcasts. Obviously, I'll put mine in there right at the top for you if you win this prize. Um, favourite blogs, favourite retailers, yarn festivals, those kind of things. She's got some essential information. So different yarn weights, recommended needle sizes, and it's really an opportunity for you to keep a track of your projects and how things go. And then we have lots of pre-printed pre pages designed for row numbers so that you can put your modifications in and at the end of each side, each page, there's a ruler as well. So it really does feel as if she's given this a great deal of thought and considered all the things that she found useful. So great idea. Towards the back, we have some graph paper and some blank pages for your notes. So that's the Knitter's Companion and her after she was um, selling these, people were saying, what about your crochet one? So that's what she's come up with. So a lot of similar thing, but in here we also have a colour wheel. So a nice bit of colour theory stuff. Again, different podcasts. Um, inventory of crochet hooks and the different sizes, which is a very useful thing because I can never remember what I've got where. Details to record your own uh, projects. And again, date, project name. I hope you can see this, like I say, the camera is uh, further away. And also, I don't want to give away too much of Janet's lovely hard work. Um, so yeah, lots of ways to keep check on your projects so that you're not dealing with scraps of paper that get lost. Again, graph paper. Uh, black pages for notes so a very useful thing and she also very kindly put a couple of progress keepers in to give away as prizes little sheepsies they're really cute so thank you so much Janet now she has an Etsy, sh Etsy shop I think I'm about to get um, viciously attacked by the dog no okay uh, Janet has an Etsy shop so if you look for the knitting companion excuse the noise that's the dog um, she also has uh, a website www.knittingcompanions.com I will put all of this in the the notes under the video under the podcast but um, those are her details and if you want to see her in person and you are fortunate enough to be going to Kendall Wall Gathering at the end of October, she will be exhibiting there. So you'll be able to chat to her, see her in person and uh, have a look at the things for yourself. So again, thank you, Janet. That is so kind of you. Um, she said that she's about to be featured in the next Crochet Now magazine and in the next Knitting magazine. So. The word is getting out there on these companions and I can see why. They, they strike me as a very useful thing uh, for the less than organised knitter. So well done Janet for putting it together and thank you for giving me the opportunity to give them away. I'm going to do this as a Ravelry giveaway so I'll put a thread on the uh, podcast group and I'd like you to tell me firstly whether or not you would like the knitting companion or the crochet companion so if you can let me know which one you want and as a little prompt for that I would like to know who would be your favorite crafting companion can be anyone alive or dead fictional or actual so it can be Elizabeth Zimmerman be a good option for the knitting could be Mr Darcy good option generally um, just anyone you like the prize will be selected prizes prizes we have one of each uh, will be selected at random so there isn't a prize for the best answer but I'm just really nosy and would like to know who you'd like to spend time crafting with so please do enter prizes will go out in the post due I'm going to close the threads 
uh, the thread on the 25th of September so that will give me time to select the prize um, as I record the end section of the September podcast um, yeah I think that's it so prizes to give away like I say uh, there's the uh, progress keeper as well and me being me I will put something sugary and terribly bad for you in the parcel too and I look forward to reading who you would like to craft with who would be your ideal non-paper companion good luck in the last podcast in the roundup of whips I was talking about my sister's cable sweater a uh, jacket that I'm making excuse the dog attention seeker <laughs> and I said that I'd got I'd started the fronts and then remembered that I was going to put pockets in and up until that point had pretty much forgotten so I'm doing everything backwards and I have started to put in the pocket now traditionally when I've put pockets into garments I've made the lining pieces first so you make a, a straight piece and then you pick up stitches to carry on the, the jacket front that you're making and you put the remainder on a holder to to pick up the rib later because I'd completely forgotten to do that I didn't make the pieces I could have obviously made the pieces but also because I'm not sure how much yarn I have for the garment and whether I'll have enough to make the pieces out of um, the main colour, the contrast colour or something else altogether I decided to do it in a different way so same principle I took some stitches I then sorry, bags of yarn falling over here I then did the rib and just six rows of single rib in the contrast colour I then did a provisional cast on so this is a crochet provisional cast on and started knitting straight I may well just pin that in to keep it in better shape as I work up and I'll work the front of the jacket as normal and then when I'm done I will unpick the provisional cast on put those stitches onto a needle and then do a stocking stitch piece down so this is the back of the cable and it would just be a piece that goes down and then I just sew round I'll probably make it deep enough to go down to the ribbing so yeah a little bit backwards in that I wouldn't normally do it with a provisional cast on I'd normally have it prepared and then just knit straight up from there but no reason not to do it this way just not what I've done before so that's it really I'll carry on working and you'll see the whole thing when it's done now apologies if you can see red hair this morning, um, it's a drumming weekend so I'm a little bit pink on the fringes, well not just the fringe, on all of it. Um, it's uh, mid-month, the weather is a comfortable temperature today, I'm sure you don't care that much. Um, I'm not going to do a roundup of whips this month, I have been working predominantly on one item which is the cotton hoodie that I'm making and what I'll do is before I... Um, record the final section the final week I will do an update on that because um, who knows it may even be finished although I think that's unlikely looking at the week I've got ahead I've said in the past that I've been knitting for many years I've been knitting since I was four but there have been times in my life when I haven't had the love for knitting and I've kind of not done it for a while and I think a lot of that is when I've got stuck on a project so I'll be working away on something and I think most of us get stuck on projects for some reason or another we get fed up with looking at the same color uh, we find it's not turning out the way that we want but we feel we're so far into it we can't stop it um, you just get fed up with the pattern the, the, you know, the stitch pattern or the color pattern so I think there are all, always times when we get a little bit eh, with items we're working on particularly garments when this has happened in the past 
I've usually only had one project on the go. So I've put it to one side and put it to one side and put it to one side and I might find a year's gone by when I've not knitted because I can't, to use one of my dad's phrases, I can't get my heart high enough to get back to the project in question. Well, that doesn't happen so much now because I have several projects on the go. And that's actually one of the reasons why I have several projects on the go. So if I do lose the love for something, I can carry on with something else. Now, I quite often work these on a, a rotor system and that works for a lot of reasons. It keeps everything fairly fresh in my mind. It stops me getting bored with anything. But because I'd got the back and the front done on the hoodie and finished the hood this week, I really feel like I want to plow on and get to the end of it and just do the sleeves. Now, if I find that um, that's, that's a short-lived feeling and I... Uh, go back to my usual, oh, I can't be bothered with that sort of mentality, then I'll stick it back in the rotor. So I'm only doing it one evening every now and again, and that will hopefully make more sense and, and get it done that way, rather than it languish for years because I kind of lost the love for it. So that was the plan. And excuse me while I take a sip of tea. It was a good plan, it was a fine plan, and I still have the love for the hoodie, but it has occurred to me that at the end of next month, I am going to visit my nephew and his family. And although I don't look old enough, obviously, I have a great niece and a great nephew. And they're small people. So I like to uh, take knitted things or made homemade things when I go to see them. I suddenly thought I'd better get cracking then. And although I was moaning, I think, last month about how long hoods take on items, I am fond of a hoodie. And I think they're very practical for children. Uh, they're quite cosy around the neck. And also it's a lot harder to lose a hood than it is to lose a hat. So I decided I'm gonna make a couple of hoodies for the children. Now the elder of the two, Fern, she is, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. I think she's six, but she's very tall and slender. She's uh, sort of, my, my nephew is very tall and my niece-in-law is quite slim. So she has the, the height and the slenderness of, of both of them. So although she's the age that she is, I tend to make things, certainly in length terms, a bit bigger because I've made things for her in the past and they've come out a bit short and a bit short in the arm. Stanley, on the on the other hand, my great nephew, he has the opposite qualities. He's quite a solid little lad. He's only just over a year. He's a sweetheart and he's quite solid. He's going to be a rugby player when he grows up, I think. So I'm also going to make his a size bigger, but this is because he's quite sort of chunky and I think he needs a bit of room to, to move. Also saw some Facebook footage of him dancing recently and he's quite a mover, so I think we need to give him bit of flexibility. So I'm going to make a couple of hoodies and I hope you can see these patterns okay. So this will be for Fern. There are actually two as you can see on this picture and it's a crochet hoodie. It's zip up here. I think I might do a button front. Um, I'll see how the mood takes me and how things go but um, yeah hopefully you can see that. Now it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's Harmony African Expressions. I think African Expressions was a range of yarn. I mean, judging by the styling on this, it's not a, a completely up-to-date pattern, but it's a classic shape, so it doesn't matter. So what am I making it with? Excuse me while I lean over to my yarn. Ooh. I have started with some purple and this is Serda Country Style Wool Blend which is 40% nylon, 30% wool, 30% acrylic. Um, mostly acrylic stuff I'm going for with these items because they're for children it means they're washable. I, I try not to inflict hand wash on parents of young children. Um, so yes, this is Serda Country Style. This is actually left over from uh, the swirl that I made. So I use this for my main colour, or my thicker colour, and then the fine yarn 
uh, was something else. I'll put a picture and a link here. Bye bye. So yes, this yarn is left over from that. So that's the first colour. I've got a couple of balls of this, I think. And I have started it, I've started the back. So you can see I've started with the purple and then I have this multicoloured yarn. I really love this. I know it's perhaps a little bit childish, but it's going for a child, so that's fine. I just absolutely adore the colours in this. This is 100% acrylic. I couldn't tell you anything more than that because I bought it as a huge uh, hank or skein. I know there is different terminology and I, I don't know which it is, but it was one of the big things that you need to wind into cakes. Uh, I bought it at Alexandra Palace a few years ago. It was dirt cheap. I just love the colour and I wish I'd bought two of them because I don't know if I'd wear this, but I just really like it, so I might. Um, it's also incredibly soft. It has a really nice feel to it. Now, I have used it for weaving in the past. I made a scarf, which I gave to a friend one Christmas, and I'll put a picture here. And it worked very well, the way the colors played with each other. So that was all good. So these are the first of the yarns. So my idea is purple, multicolored, bit more purple, and then the top half will be this blue. So this is Stylecraft Life DK, which is 75% premium acrylic, not just acrylic people, this is premium acrylic, and 25% wool. Bit disappointed it doesn't say premium wool, but hey. And I made a, a sweater for my sister a couple of years ago. Uh, I'll put a picture up here, just a, like a fisherman's type sweater with a cable piece across the top and this was the yarn that I made it from and I have I think two or three balls left over of this so that's what I'm using for the rest of it so like I say we'll have the purple we'll have the multicolored we'll have more purple and then blue for the top this is a crochet pattern now the pattern does call I think for it's one on the floor I think the yarn, it's a discontinued yarn, and I think it's either worsted or Aran weight. But I did a tension swatch, and my tension came out to match the pattern. That's with a 5mm hook, so although it's all DK weight yarn, it's not as dense as perhaps it might be um, with the, the other, the recommended yarn. But like I say, the, the swatch is coming out the same. So maybe that makes a nonsense of what I've just said about density. But anyway, it's working for the pattern. So that's what we're going with. So that saved a lot of recalculation, which is very handy. So that is Young Fern. Although I'm making them both hoodies, I didn't want to make them identical hoodies because one's a six-year-old girl, one's a year-old boy. Um, and I don't want to treat them as, you know, homogenous great niece and nephew so I wanted to make uh, Stanley something a little different now this is quite a, a small picture on this but I hope you can see it so it's another hoodie this one's knitted and it's a sweater rather than a, um, a jacket or cardigan it again is a free pattern on Ravelry this is from looks like Purple Kitty Yarns and it's the comfy hoodie WT2143. Haven't swatched for it yet, so this will. Uh, this is an unknown, it's a, as yet a mystery garment, except I know what it'll look like. Excuse all my knitting, I was trying to work out what yarn I had. Because I went from the original, this is what I do when I'm trying to work out what to make things and I'm sort of yarn shopping from stash. Find out what the original yarn is what the yardage or meterage is and how many meters I need. So in this case, I need just over 650 meters of yarn. Um, judging by the gauge or judging by the yarn information on Ravelry, I can go for the uh, approximate weight. So then I go through my stash to see what I've got, which is why I have these lists of different things and how much meterage to see if I have enough. So what I've opted for in this one 
I had a couple of choices. I've got some uh, black and grey and white candy swirl, which is 100% acrylic yarn. It's an option. I just think it's uh, a little bit too stark for a little lad because he's a little squishy lad that you just want to go when you see him. So um, it, the black and it might be quite cool, but I'm not sure it's really quite right. So I've gone for something a little softer. And again, I'm going to lean over and pick up the yarns. Now you may remember a few months ago, I had resubscribed to a magazine and was treated like a new subscriber and they very kindly sent me some yarns. So I have two balls of Serda Snuggly and this is a colourway called Eeyore. And I'm not sure how well the light is showing the colour. Um, it's quite a soft grey, almost towards a sort of purpley kind of grey, if that doesn't sound too odd. But um, yeah, so I've got this, this colour going here. They also sent a ball of a very slightly off-white, almost towards a cream. Again, I'm not sure, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so that gives me three balls of yarn which gives me about 450 uh, metres, I think. Actually, a little bit more, because it's 165 per, uh, per ball. So I needed something else. So I have here some white double knitting acrylic, which is a lovely soft acrylic. Now, here's the ball band, excuse the state of it. And you can see it was three for two when I bought it. And I actually bought it some time ago in the pound shop. So I got three balls of this for two quid. And it is very soft acrylic. So I think this would be a good choice because it's soft, but it's washable. It's going to be hard wearing. I mean, they're little kids. They're going to grow. Um, I don't know how long they'll actually have use of this for, but hopefully it will be a nice, warm, cosy garment while they do. I've got to swatch, so that could throw everything out of the water and I may need to completely rethink, but that's the plan so far. I also found a little bit of red, which I might choose just for a bit of edging or a bit of something around the hood, perhaps, just to give it a bit of pop of colour, because much as I like these colours, they might be a bit dull for a year old, 18 month old little boy. So just a little bit of something, uh, just to, to give a little bit of detailing. No, that's the plan. So those are my projects. Now I have a train journey to Scotland in the early part of September and depending on how I've got on with everything it's possible that I'll have swatched for Stanley's sweater and that might be my train project because it's a fairly simple design it's all in stocking stitch um, so as long as I remember to take sort of tape measure and scissors and things like that that might be a good train project because fairly small pieces, not too weighty or cumbersome. That's the plan. And as always, I'll let you know how I got on. I just don't let you know when because things go by the wayside. But these both have a deadline of 20 something of September, which is when we go to visit uh, the family. So I'm hoping to have both of these items finished by then. And I'll be, be honest, that was partly a reason for going for a crochet uh, hoodie for the bigger of the two children because this will be a quicker project for me. So I didn't want to turn up with half a sweater because the other half would never get done then. My plan to concentrate on one big project has worked. I've only gone and finished something. I have finished my cotton hoodie. I will put a photograph here of me wearing it. And it is, I call it on Ravelry, my loose cotton thing. And that's exactly what it is. It's big, it's baggy, it's got a hood, it's kind of dog walking type item, very loose. And of course, being 100% cotton will only get looser, but I don't mind. I like big baggy things. I like wrapping up in things when it's cold. So yes, I have finished. Um, one of the things that spurred me on was I realized that um, 
I'd actually been working on it for over a year. I looked at the start date on the project on Ravelry and it was July last year. So it occurred to me I needed to, I would say pull my finger out, but actually pull my needles out, get going, get it finished. So that's done. So to run through the whole thing, the pattern is called the Divi Adult Hoodie. That's D-I-V-I. -I. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's from Caron Yarns. So the original pattern is for an acrylic bamboo mix, but obviously that's not what I made it out of. I got the yarn at Alexandra Palace, or the red yarn certainly, at Alexandra Palace um, some time ago. It was, I can't remember which stall, which booth I bought it from, but they had seven balls of Aracania Ulmo um, up for grabs and never one to pass by a bargain, never one to pass by a yarn stall really, um, I made a purchase. So seven balls, um, it's 185 grams per ball, so whatever that works out to. Uh, on a smaller person would be enough to make an item, but I wanted something big and to fit a bigger frame, so I knew it wouldn't be quite enough for a sweater. So last year, possibly the year before, I bought the two other colours. Now these are Drops yarns, they're Drops ma Muscat, so that's also 100% cotton double knitting weight yarn. And I've got this beige which you can see and the white. What this also shows uh, is that the pattern has a split hem at the waist, so it is very much a casual item, very much uh, for throwing on over other things. In terms of how much yarn I used, I have this much left of the red, so I used six and a half of the hanks of that. The total yarn on this was 1900 metres, something like that. I used five balls of the white and two balls of the beige. So the beige I used in total and I have three balls of white left, but to be honest, white, 100% cotton, you're never gonna have trouble using up. Dishcloths, hand towels, facial scrubbies, there will always be a use for it. I wondered if I would need to put some in the sleeves, which is why I changed from working those bottom up to top down. It actually works okay with the pattern. It's not obvious that it's the other way up. Got away with it. Um, and as it turned out, I had plenty, hence I have some left over, which I'm now throwing over the floor. Um, so able to keep all of the sleeves in the red and just the color blocking for the white and beige. Very simple stitch pattern. It's one of those that looks uh, more complicated than it is. Three rows out of four are stocking stitch and the rest is a simple pearl, increase and yarn over pattern to give these ridges and this lace pattern. Not sure what else to say, it's knitted, the pieces are fairly straight in shape, knitted in pieces and sewn together. Yeah, that's kind of it. So it's a nice simple pattern. Like I say, it's a free one on Ravelry. Um, if I were making it again, which I won't be, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's not one I'll make again, I don't think, I would make the sleeves the same length as I have here which is about three inches shorter than uh, recommended in the pattern. I don't think I have unnaturally short arms but I think there is sometimes um, a sizing problem. When things are wider the assumption is that everything is proportionately longer and another three inches which is what's required on this would have had it coming over kind of the end. And looking at the picture, I don't think the plan is to have terribly long sleeves. Um, but like I say, I think there's a problem with gauging that, uh, with sizing, that when people go wider, they don't necessarily think that you're gonna be coming a bit further down here because your shoulder length is still the same. Uh, you know, this shoulder length doesn't vary that much between someone my size and so I'm much smaller, there might only be an inch difference here. So you don't need three inches difference on the sleeves. 
but when I say the shoulder length I mean my body shoulder length isn't that much wider so if you're then knitting a wider piece because it's fitting around a large bust or a large frame you're then coming further down on the drop sleeve so that's why it was too long so I made it shorter I think I would also make the sleeves uh, a little smaller in terms of um, depth of sleeve as well they are very baggy now given the nature of the the garment the design of the garment that makes perfect sense but I think for my personal taste I would shape them a little more start off a little smaller and shape them they're quite baggy at the wrist um, which is fine I'll just roll them over but um, I normally prefer something a little more tailored so those are the only suggestions I would make if you're thinking of making this item. It is a nice pattern, very simple, very straightforward, um, with the one row and four having that yarn over and uh, knitting together pattern. It gives it enough interest, but it's so easy to memorise that it's a quite a portable project. You can take it to your knitting group or wherever, and um, it's an easy one to get along with. So I'm very pleased. It's cosy, it's baggy, which is what I wanted. It's very casual. Just smacked myself in the face with the hood, but that's fine. I uh, found a big button. I have a bit of a button stash as well as a yarn stash. Um, when you are a crafter, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this, you suddenly find people say, oh, I was sorting out my great aunt's house and there's this yarn and there are these needles and there are these buttons. And you kind of say, oh, thank you very much. And you take all this stuff on unless you learn to be discerning, which is a technique I haven't acquired yet. Um, so I've got a button stash like a yarn stash and I'm very reluctant to buy buttons as well. Quite often it means that I haven't got quite enough. So I'll need six for a cardigan and I've got five or something like that. But in this case, I just needed one. So I found something equally chunky, put that on. And that's the only, um, but you have to do the buttonhole isn't a buttonhole it's just sewn on and there's a crochet chain for the loop i don't know if i'll ever undo that because it goes over my head without i was a bit worried when i first put it on uh, to check the sleeve length i'd sewn the shoulder seams but hadn't put the hood on and it was incredibly wide at the neck but i think with the hood on and with the button in place it keeps it all at an acceptable level i put Again, a photograph here of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. But that's it. A finished object. It f I know I've done lots of small finished objects, but it feels like a long time since I've made anything proper, if you like, made anything big. And now I have. So I shall rest upon my laurels and lounge for the afternoon while someone feeds me grapes. Actually, that's not going to happen because it's only me and the dog here and she hasn't got opposable thumbs, so... So I won't rest on my laurels, I'll do some work. Not wearing this because it's too warm, but knowing that this is in the cupboard and finished, which is a nice feeling. Right, my lovelies, we are nearly done for the month. So thank you again for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you want to win those lovely companion books. There'll be a thread on Ravelry. So just to remind you, if you can put on whether you want the crochet book or the knitting one, it's open to everyone wherever you live in the world. I'm happy to post um, across the world, so don't feel you can't apply, uh, enter. If you're not in the UK or Europe, you're more than welcome to take part. Good luck. Um, I just think it's a lovely idea, It'd be a good idea as a prize, um, a gift for a knitter actually, if you've got knitting friends and you're not sure what to buy them, that's a, a good idea that's not, it's something a bit different, you know, we've, all knitters, we all love yarn, we all love accessories and notions and things like that, but that's something a bit different, so it's a good idea. Yes, I think we're nearly done for this month, uh, a relatively short one for me this month, so that's got to be a blessing. Next month will be a different story. I am having a month off work, which seems a bit extravagant, but it does feel necessary. I've had um, some up and down times. I've been doing the job 10 years and I just feel like I need a bit of a break. So I've been saving my pennies and I'm having a month off. 
Uh, this isn't only affordable because I haven't been buying yarn this year. I have been saving generally. I don't want you to feel that my yarn expenditure was that high. Although, hmm. hopefully I'll get lots of crafting done. It won't necessarily be all yarn crafts. Um, I may do two podcasts next month. One will be not quite enough yarn as normal. The other will be nothing to do with yarn, which will be the other bits and pieces that I do. Much will depend on time. I'm also going to be... Um, catching up with friends, doing sort of general pottering and chores and things that need doing. So hopefully I'll have lots of time for craft, but no promises, no guarantees. But yeah, I'm gonna put a podcast together, which will be kind of what I'm up to, because I'm doing a fair bit of traveling. And some of this will be combined with crafting, because I have a map here, which I hope you can see. Map of the UK. Now I live in this area here, and I've got two train journeys coming up this month. One is taking me up to here and back, and then later in the month, one's taking me down to here and back. So nice long train journeys, lots of time for crafting. So looking forward to that. And yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna post it up as a vlog on a daily basis. I don't know if any of you have been watching uh, Skane Deer Knits Vlogist, which I've really enjoyed. She's been to different places. She's showed sort of five, 10 minutes or so of what she's doing every day. And I've really enjoyed catching up with them. I'm not gonna post daily, cause I don't think there'll be stuff to post every day, but I will put together a, an alternative non-yarn related post, uh, podcast, and put that up at the end of the month as well as the normal yarn one. So don't feel you've got to watch it, but it's there if, you, if you're interested. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate everyone who likes, subscribes, presses all the buttons that are down here. Thank you so much. It is much appreciated. And I think we're done. Yep, so competition, thread in Ravelry. I'll lock it down on the 25th of September. So good luck if you take part in that. Have a great month, everyone. I hope that whatever you do brings you joy and whatever you make brings you even more joy. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.